Well, we're in the game. We're in champ select, so we will be seeing you know what's going on. Uh, there's a number of you know really strong champions that I would expect uh, expect to play. I'm gonna hit accept. We'll be best friends. Uh, so there are a number of champions. We have Janna being banned. Definitely works out. I'm already at, I'm already your friend. I don't understand yeah. how you know that could be any different from now. Yeah, Janna is a really uh, popular pick. So yeah. it's just it's so easy. To, I think it's fairly easy to like make really good plays for her aura affects everybody. And it's just really annoying the face of the jungle because everyone's moving faster. Uh, yeah, I think the Vagar band specifically at NY Jackie, I'm assuming. Right. No, I mean, his Vagar is just insane whenever you see it played. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of a weird band, but... I'm, yeah, I'm assuming it's, like, directly targeted right. at him. So, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, Jan and Kennen, just strong all-around champions. A lot of times against kind of newer teams, you'll ban out people like Kennen and Morgana who... Are just yeah. like really safe laners. And yeah, you really safe. It's hard to gank because the jungle. It's really hard to gank lanes like that because it, it's just so safe. Like you run really fast, and we're gonna have that shield that defends against a spell, so you can't really CC her down in a gank. We also have the Akali ban. So uh, West Rice in here. He is actually subbing. So West Rice uh, getting rid of that Akali. He hasn't played it in a while yeah, though. But I mean, I don't know if I'd ban that. Yeah. But. Like, I mean, he plays a really good Akali, but he, it doesn't fit in a lot of team comps. So, yeah, I don't know. I think that ban might have been wasted. I, I think the big thing, though, is they just, I don't know, Calamity, they want to try and uh, keep themselves in the game. They don't want to lose in the first five minutes and yeah. see what they can do. So, um, I don't know, just get rid of those champions that they know. All right, well, I'm downright going to lose. Give, give some champions that there's like maybe only a 99% chance that they'll lose. Yeah, I guess that's one way to put it, but they're 1500, they could they could pull an upset. Yeah. I, I remember uh, Team Green Forest, they're, I mean, they're a really strong team now. When they started off and they were, um, you know, first playing as a team, uh, they were all only like 15 to 1700. They, you know, weren't highly rated players, but they had like a lot of coordination and um, just kept, you know, yeah. playing and developing so yeah that's really important yeah like more than elo like reggie mm -hmm. like basically like did really well at the curse tourney despite like being barely 1900 I is he really i mean you guys haven't played in a while so you've been on the eu server for the most part no, right no we, we've been on na his elo has been tanked it was like 2200 one week and then it was like 1900 to next <laughs> well we'll have to see that's why he plays uh, easy champs like karthus right you can just sit there and farm and then press yeah, r that's somewhat hard Anyway, uh, Shen, very strong pit. You can put him in jungle or top lane, so I'm assuming it might be top lane. Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, that is one thing we've, we haven't really seen a lot of top lane Shen recently. Um, uh, yeah. But it's, it's been mostly in the jungle. Yeah, like since no one invades anymore, um, people just jungle with it because all you do is just farm and then press your alt when someone ganks your lanes. So that's sort of why people have been doing it. We have the next picks, Grave and, uh, Graves and Soraka. That's always nice because you can just kind of like push the enemy into the uh, tower very easily. Yeah, it, um, it's a fairly safe lane. Um, it's just so tanky. Like, as long as Soraka's not the one hit, like, if you let Graves take all the damage, you just put a heal on him and he has 200 armor suddenly. So it's very hard to really win that. It's really hard to beat them in lane. Like, you just have to go even because there's, no, there's not much kill pressure on either side. Well, we'll have to see. Um, it's going to be tough regardless. Do you, now, uh, Cop, um, you know, we, we had seen a lot of a, uh, AD COG in, like for a while, but I, I think it's more common to be AP COG now. Do you expect that's, you know, yeah, has that versatility still? or? Uh, yeah, he does. Like, though not many people play him AD much. I think the last team that did play him AD was ours. So, um, no, most people play him AP because, yeah, they did nerf him for a reason because it was really, really strong. So... But the th yeah, the thing about Cog, it could be AD bot or AD or AP mid. So if a, a good team would be able to use that information really well and pick really nice lanes. Yeah, and it's it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, Nocturne is definitely a strong pick against you know, particularly against someone like Cog. You yeah. can get that initiation. Yeah, that um, the Nocturne ultimate basically shuts down AD Cogma for that four seconds because. Um, his sight range isn't that much when it's all dark, and since Kogma has long range when he presses W, if he doesn't have vision, like it's completely useless, and he's basically shut down for four seconds. We'll have to see. I mean, the the lane matchup though, Cog versus TF, and now you know since we have a Tristana, uh, it will be an AP Cog. Um, I, I would generally think that 
Cog would be an advantage. TF would like before around like level six have the advantage, but Cog just has so much range you can farm easily, and then just start you know harassing from long range. Or do you uh, kind of disagree? Think it, I think it just uh, might be even. The thing is like the problem with Cog is he can't actually roam, so mm -hmm. he just has to farm middle lane and hope to get the late game. Because I assume Twisted Fate is just gonna um, put some wild cards out, push the wave, and get ready to gank another lane with Nocturne with their ultimates. So. Yeah, Kogma can just farm and hope the lane phase breaks. As long as the lane phase is up, like, Twisted Fate and Nocturne are really good. That's a victor. Yeah, that'd be kind of weird. But uh, one of the nice things about, like, Kog versus TF in that mid lane, um, against TF, a lot of times you kind of want to push him into the tower or try and harass yeah. him down so he can't roam. Yeah, and if Kog push, can do that. Yeah, well, yeah, if you push him to the tower, um, yeah, he can't, like, roam. Or else if he does roam, then he loses several waves at his tower because the tower is destroying his waves and he's not getting gold or experience from it. But, um, but yeah. But I don't, I don't know if Cog would be able to do that because Twisted Fate has a ton of AoE damage. And if he gets blue buff, there's no way he's going to be able to push, push out against Twisted Fate. So it's Victor so top. We, uh, it's Victor top, but we also see Curse is running two teleports unless they change that. So I have seen, you know, Cog with teleport mid before. It's kind of, you know, weird, but Cog doesn't really need ignite. You don't need, you can go yeah. ghost or cleanse if you have to worry about it. Yeah, but, you um, don't go ignite on Cog because if you're in range to ignite someone, you're probably dead. So that is a problem with AP Cog. So yeah, you wouldn't go ignite. Um, yeah, the second slot's mostly either an escape or I don't personally don't really like teleport on them. Like you could use ghost, you could use heal. Yeah, you're right. So it's really open, but I don't really like teleport then. I'm just imagining, like, okay, so Element switching off of it. I was, I was trying to figure out what he would be trying to do with the teleport as Alistar, and I mean, it would be funny occasionally, but it's yeah. just, it's such a long cooldown that it would be really difficult yeah, to use. Yeah, and if he like leaves bottom lane, then that leaves bottom lane open. Like, sure, he might teleport to get a kill somewhere else, but it has to be worth it, or else Tristano would get one v two'd by Soraka and Graves. And I, you know, like you said, I've never seen Victor anywhere outside of mid. You almost never see him mid anyway. Um, I don't know. He he could kind of play like Swain maybe. And Swain, you know, definitely has some potential top. But I would think that the mana would be an issue. And just the fact that, I don't know, his snare is hard to uh, stop ganks. I don't know. What What is your kind of thought yeah, of that think, versus Shen? I think whoever goes top is a free kill for Udyr. Um like Swain, Swain actually has yeah two snares, but Victor has just a snare that might if it misses, and he's pretty much dead unless Twisted Fate or Nocturne helps him out. So I think whoever's going top is gonna get mauled over and over, cause all Shine has to do is just walk in range for a taunt, and if you constantly move away, like say Victor or Twisted Fate constantly move away from Shen, then he can just zone you out from CS. So you're you're eventually gonna have to move close to get a last hit in, or else you're gonna get. Yeah, and if when you do, you get taunted, and Uder comes and kills you. So they're, yeah, top lane's gonna probably get mauled. So um, curse, they're also running you know, just a really aggressive team. They have you know Shen, and they have Udyr and uh, Alistar. I don't know. That's kind of a team that I would expect to go for a level one invade. But again, uh, on the other team, Nocturne's also really strong. Graze is really strong. Uh, TF, you know, he's really strong early on. Um, I don't know, do you think that you kind of hold back a little bit and don't want to allow any early kills, or do you think that Curse might uh, go for the quick invade? Uh, invasion's, yeah, really good for their team because they got really tanky guys. Like If they can slow down the enemy jungle, that means the lane phase will be easier. They also want to stop the lane phase, so in order to break lane phase, they'd have to like kill mid-tower or something or yeah, kill one of the t important towers and just start... Because then the ultimates won't be as useful when they're in a group, so... Yeah, so they probably want to stall, or, or it, if they invade level 1, that would be really good. Like, take away Nocturne's red and make sure he doesn't take their red. That means his ganks will be weak until level 6. So that could be a good possibility. Okay, well, we'll have to see. We're coming into game number 1, guys. Curse versus Calamity. Um, I'm definitely excited. We have, you know, all of TSM outside. They're all cheering, the like, odd one, odd mm. one. Probably not. They're probably all just, you know, sitting around. But, um... I don't know, we'll have to see. The, the clairvoyance is kind of nice on Soraka to, you know, keep an eye on um, Udyr, and it'll allow... I mean, if they can keep an eye on the wards then and get some aggressive yeah. ganks from Nocturne, they definitely... Yeah, that would allow, yeah, Twisted Fate and Nocturne have better roaming. If they know where the wards are, they know where not to step. Because Soraka knows, basically, that 
there's no way they're going to get a kill bottom, so there's no point really going offensive summoners. They're just going to play sit at tower mostly and just farm. Yeah, that's kind of the weird thing with um, sending Victor top. I mean, he is going to be a really aggressive lane. He, he could maybe get a kill, but... Um, I don't know. Generally speaking, I would think you would want a safer top lane yeah. that also has killing potential since, you know, it's like you said, Soraka, you're not really going to get a, a gank off. Alistar and Tristana are pretty safe. So top lane is really the lane that you're looking to pick up kills. And if Shen gets an early advantage against um, Victor, then that could kind of make things yeah, difficult. Victor would, yeah, start losing the lane because he, he has a bit of burst damage. Like his sustained damage is okay at best, but I'd rather have someone that could trade with Shen over and over the B top lane or push on him without dying. But I don't think Victor's going to be able to push that far without getting ganked. Well, here we go. We are into the game. Uh, we'll see how it works out for them. I It's been a while since I've seen Victor anyway. Like, he's kind of interesting mid because his ultimate, yeah. the silence, is just yeah, so if, ridiculous. If you can combine CC with that, it's actually a really strong ultimate. If you can keep him in place so they all follows him. Yeah, it looks like Curse is going to invade because you notice they all went boots, so they can get to anywhere in the map faster than the opponent. Yeah, and so if they start off and they're they're moving up towards the red, they actually, um, I guess I guess they're coming around. I was kind of wondering if they would just I don't know, just be jerks and sit up in the uh, top bush, but um, they'll probably invade that red, and we'll see you know how Calamity kind of deals with it because they're they're starting to move to the red themselves. I think Victor might get caught here. He got way too late to that tree bush. Yeah. As long as they don't bugger it up. Oh, oh man, God. Victor <laughs> just barely out of there. The Tristana oh not God. hitting the slow. We actually have the Shen taunt though, the flash into it. And there's the pulverize yeah. very quickly. Plasma does uh, go down. It was because, yeah, Nocturne had claw farmer and he didn't flash over the wall. So if you start claw farmer and you're against a team with five boots, they'll just outrun and flash you. And they're actually just going to ward and then back off. So they'll keep an eye on where Nocturne is. They already have their jungling advantage. Uh, and then they can kind of go back to their... Oh, oh but the taunt. God. Shen, oh no. Wow. So two kills. <laughs> Curse is... Uh, they're loving life right now. So they're just going to keep invading. They didn't even really lose the anything for those fall. kills. Like They lost two ignites and a flash, but their team is just so beefy. They basically made the opponent afraid because they lost position advantage. So yeah, we do have the CV now, so uh, we have an idea of where they are, but uh, Nocturne going to be starting red. They'll be able to take the blue, um, and that'll you know be pretty you know painful early, but we'll see uh, how it works out. You know, they, they do have the advantage of not only... Who did he like, go? So Shen and Udyr. So Shen definitely um, yeah, you know, going to be awesome there. Yeah, Victor's going to have problems killing someone, someone that has 200 more HP. And the big issue, I, I guess they should be thankful that Tristana didn't get a kill because... Yeah, she would have gone into Doran's Blade. She would have just teleported back and gone to Doran's Blade, and that would have been really annoying to deal with. Yeah, it's just I, I couldn't imagine laying against Tristana and Alistar at, like, such a huge disadvantage. But, um, I don't know, we'll have to see. They, they do drop the ward there, so it's nice to get some uh, early ward coverage. Uh, what so when you start down like two nothing, you guys in your tournament recently, you guys started yeah, down four to one, one yeah. against TSM Evo. W what are your primary goals when you're down that far, um, you know, to try and catch yourself back up in the game? Uh, you have to play very safe because you're facing an opponent that has a gold lead, so you can't make risky plays or else it would snowball you further. So you just like usually you play safe until the opponent makes a mistake. Oh, there's the oh headbutt into God. the wall. The pulverize Tristana jumping on him. There's the quick dash, but they're chasing him out. And now Graves at such a huge disadvantage. He does have Soraka. So, you Peter know, might be hopefully be top. able. Yeah, and so uh, uh, St. Vicious is coming top. Um, we'll see if he gets in. He is going to come oh behind Victor. God. That's that's a dead Victor. Yeah. We have the flash. It's not going to work out for him. They're actually tower diving, so they, yeah, they do get that, though. Both really tanky, yeah. And actually, at the same time, Alistar coming in once again. One more attack, and the flash from Cop actually able to get it, then hopping out of there. So four nothing now for Curse. Uh, really quickly, just taking control of this game. And it's I don't know, like you said, it's just passive play. Um, you know, get out wards to avoid that kind of jungle pressure. And I, I don't know, like Victor Top. We've it's already yeah. kind of been established. It's a weird pick, but. Um, is there anything in particular that you think he can do at this point, or is it just... Well, he has to just ward and farm at his tower. The problem is, he's so far behind, and Udyr and Shen are so far ahead that they could just double-dive him at this rate. Like, if they get tanky enough, they can both dive him at tower, so... 
he's he has to be very very careful and like maybe buy Dorans or something defensive because it's not a good time to oh. be him. And I I would normally just be like yeah Nocturne, Nocturne get in there be a balls. badass. His balls. But that is that is really ballsy. The reason uh, yeah the reason why Sane didn't do that yet he wanted to do his blue much faster. Um, he w he did both blues to make sure Nocturne didn't get a single one, but I'm not sure why Saint ran towards his double gums before doing red buff. That was probably not a good idea. He's actually pinging Nocturne, trying to get yeah. Cog over there. It's he, not he going to happen. Realized, yeah, he just realized that his stuff got taken. But so yeah. Saint outplayed for oh, the moment. Nocturne, 1500 elo jungler, too good. <laughs> we'll have to see. I mean, that's definitely going to be nice. I mean, it prevents some of the aggression with Udyr, but, yeah, but um, the big thing is, you know, if, if he's going to get in for the stun, then yeah. he's dead anyway, but he we'll see. This might be, eh. Yeah, he no, is coming really mid. TF hard. should be he okay, though. Flash. That's the thing, since, yeah, San already used Flash for that kill metal, so it just came up, or it's coming up in, like, a few seconds, but, yeah. And so he's actually going, um, you know, Heart of Gold, so it is going to be like a Phoenix. Uh, yeah. What what are your kind of thoughts for, like, Tiger Udyr? Because we have seen some people do it. It is really aggressive with ganks. You have just so much killing potential. Uh, uh, are you primarily, like, a Phoenix guy right now? I'm a Phoenix guy, uh, mainly because you can clear camps much faster. I think Tiger does Dragon better, but it has trouble with the smaller camps, like Wolves and Wraiths. Like, those spawn more often than Dragons, so... Oh, really actually, Graves farm. walking right into Elements. He didn't have enough mana to get that uh, headbutt back, so but um, kind of fortunate essentially there. zone, though, bottom lane. It's yeah. not looking good. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. We do have Nocturne kind of making his way down here, but the issue is they have no killing potential. Even with Nocturne, you know, they'll be fine. Yeah. Cop just being extremely aggressive, and Nocturne um, coming down, yeah. but he should be able to get out of there. Uh, uh, we have the yeah. Silence. Yes, a flash fear. Oh my god. Oh, elements. Uh, Actually, the fear going on to elements in the uh, fountain there, but he will be able to get out of there. And so, so far, TF has actually been doing a pretty, you know, good job mid uh, farming. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see if he can maybe start to bully around Cog. The issue is the Cog slow versus TF. Like, I, I just couldn't ever imagine TF being able to harass Cog because Cog yeah. would just slow walk out it's of there and not even lane. care. Like, neither person can really hit the other guy without taking enough damage. So, yeah, I, vi I think Victor's done. Like, if Udyr's... Yeah, Udyr's just going to gank him, like, right now. Yeah, like, and he doesn't even have ward coverage, yeah, so... He's really far behind in CS, and he's just going to get further behind. See, he can't get near or else he gets taunted. Like, he yeah. doesn't realize that, so... So we have the trap going down. Unfortunately, he is go. surrounded. There's the taunt from Shen. TF is actually porting in, though, and we're going to have Nocturne as well. He's only level four, uh, though. Can we get the stun off? Victor very close to going down. The flash in, go. so they do pick that up. And actually, TF <laughs> has to flash as well. <laughs> I don't know if he needed to, but he did. And actually, in the meantime, in bottom, not only were they zoned bot, but we have the flash pulverize onto Panda, the headbutt backwards oh, wow. with Cop on the follow-up, and the exhaust. So very quickly, they're able to get that kill as well. So just... Uh, really abusive right now, you know, at, at this point, it's it's kind of weird to say, but, you know, down 6-0, again, you want to just kind of sit back, be defensive, farm what you can, but it's it's just really difficult to come uh, back from any game when you're down this far, because all the lanes, you can kind of just, I don't know, well, zone yeah, out. Well, yeah, what they have to do is they cannot push. Like, the problem is top lane and bottom lane keep getting pushed out for no reason, so... Like, you, like, if you're behind, you, you're going to lose dragon objectives unless you can properly counter it. But, but you're gonna, yeah, you might lose your buffs and your dragons, but at least you can farm at tower. But uh, the problem is Calamity is not freezing the lane properly. Like, you notice Shen, Shen is keeping a lane on his side, so that means Victor is going to be easy target every time Udyr is in the neighborhood. Oh, well actually, we have elements uh, coming in behind. The quick burst on the Soraka, just tower diving it yeah, with the see, ultimate. Th th that's the best way for... Calamity to win bottom lane is to stay at their tower. That's like the one place they can die. It actually is working out really well for them because Cop didn't have any vision with that shroud. Has to get over there, throws off the flash, but <laughs> oh, now Alistar. Oh, no, he oh, the wrong person. Alistar is going to go down. We have the wild cards. He's trying to get out of there. The quick oh, shot. There's the headbutt. Yeah. Actually, the taunt from West Rice. They're going to turn it around. Uh, wild cards not hitting. Oh, uh, actually, oh, he does two. go down. Wow. So there's the one kill. Wow. Udyr coming in now. Maybe going to be able to grab him. Will we have the flash? Uh, we don't. No, we do have the flash on the graves. He's flashing out, but he's flashing back to his turret. Yeah, he's going to get dove. There's two tanks. Tanks are going to defend or block that tower. So, so there it is. West Rice and Saint Vicious finishing it up. Now we have Nocturne chasing him down. He wants to get a kill. He really doesn't have an option here, so he probably needs to back off. Yeah. Uh, he could get some damage onto West Rice, but 
Yeah, um, he has no items, yeah. so won't pan out much. But at least with Shen going bottom, it allows Victor to finally farm because he's been so far behind. Like he's 20 CS behind and two kills down. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that he's not just you yeah. know pushing this lane right into the tower at this like point. He, because he should because he knows where every other person is on the map. Like he just saw them. He should have took that final wave. So I'm not sure why he backed off that time. Yeah, so that will slow him down. And then here's one of the nice things about Cog is, I mean, it's so easy to farm and then just come right over to the Wraiths. He doesn't even have blue yet. Yeah, I, th I think that's more because Nocturne's so far behind. Like, mm -hmm. normally you'd be able to gank that because Cog has no defensive abilities aside from just having Flash. So, but since they're so far ahead, he's allowed to do that. We'll see. And uh, we're actually seeing uh, Gold Pretend onto Cog. That's actually kind of interesting. A lot of the... Um, you know, kind of farming mid laners recently, we've been seeing a lot of gold pretend, and it's just, it's so strong in general. Yeah, uh, if you have any thoughts. Uh, it's really strong against a nunner farm, or a nunner farm lane, so, because if you know no one's going to kill each other mid lane, you can just get those items, because you're not going to die as long as it doesn't, like, hinder your ability to get dragon. It's pretty easy to just keep even with those items mid lane. And again, West Rice just bullying Victor here. Um, only a level behind, but even so, he can't just face up against Shen at this point. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Is there at, at this point? I mean, it is eight to two. Um, you know, like you said, defensive play. You can you know try and get him to dive you. We have the tower going down bottom. Is it mostly just you know kind of sit and wait like? You know, is, I don't know, just sit back and farm. Like, is there a point in this game where um, maybe now that we have levels on TF and Nocturne, we can start seeing some aggressive ganks and um, see uh, if we can pick up kills? They can do that. They might be able to do it. But they can start doing that if they know they have numbers. Like, what they need to do is just put words out in, in order to make calculated good plays. Like, if they have vision on the enemy, they'll know if they have numbers to do the ultimates. Like, there's no point Nocturne and TF ulting if they're outnumbered because they're behind already so they can't win that way but um, at this rate they have to just catch someone that just strays and then just double out him. And West Rice actually coming into the jungle but he's going to walk right into Victor. Can he get off the taunt? There's actually the flash from St. Vicious. His taunt is down. We do have the ultimate from yep, Victor as well but he is going to go Here down. TF ulting in, Nocturne coming up as well. We have the fear. West Race is actually going to go yeah. down, so they so pick that up. That was probably kill. worth it for Calamity. Yeah, as I was saying, they had more numbers in just yeah, they had more numbers in Curse there, so they were able to get Shen. And so now Saint Vicious is kind of trapped. He will get the movement speed. He has GF his team coming flash, up, but I don't think he's gonna. Yeah, he's not ballsy. So he is going to be fine. Uh, Cop coming up now, leaving that bottom lane. They will be able to take down this mid turret. Um, and try and get, you know, just even more map control. We actually have the fear going off. Nocturne's getting very sure low, though. We will have some nice range harass from Nijacky if he keeps chasing. Actually, the flash in and then the headbutt into the pulverize onto TF. He does flash out of there, though, so he is able to get out. But uh, all of Curse is here. We could see them go for Dragon now with how low, um, you know, Calamity is. Uh, actually, I don't know. A couple of the members of Curse are pretty low as well, so um, I guess they'll probably just back off. Yeah, because Twisted Fate has blue, so he has enough or enough sustain to keep on putting out wild cards. And in the meantime, we have Graves just sitting down there, pushing down that bottom turret. Um, you know, that'll help him keep up on farm. He's, you know, pretty far behind right now, but, um, you know, any early gold will definitely help. He recognizes, yeah. I need to get out of there. I have Trist, I have Alistar coming, yeah. so he will back off. That was probably the right play, because his lane left to go middle, so the only thing you could do is just start pushing it rapidly. Where else um, Tristana and Alistair would keep pushing a different lane or go on Dragon. But I think they're going to do Dragon soon. So what are your thoughts on Victor in the team fights? Because, I mean, TF, you know, he, he's kind of weird. Like, he, he can have a lot of poke in fights and be strong if he's unaffected. But if you can engage on him, then really quickly he becomes just a really weak overall t uh, the fight champion. Yeah, uh, the problem with Calamity's team is it's really hard. If they get engaged on... Um, it's really hard for them to survive because they don't really have a dedicated tank or anything to keep them or peel off enemy champions. Like, Victor is fairly useless in this regard because if they go on Victor or Twisted Fate, one of them is going to die pretty fast. So they don't really work well together. Yeah, so right now, Curse able to take down this dragon. Uh, who's the man mode guy? We have Saints doing pretty well. Shen as well, just crushing that top lane. But... Um, uh, we'll see. We have the ward up here, and the Oracle's on Saint, so they're going to have some nice map control. Um, uh, some teams, it's it's interesting, you know, 
sometimes you'll look at the uh, support as like the oracles. A lot of times with aggressive junglers, it's you know really nice to get that map control. Um, I don't know. Do you usually, if if you're ahead, I mean clearly it's going to be beneficial. Yeah. But if it's in like an even game, when do you usually look to get oracles, or is it do, just it just really depend? Uh, if if you think you either can snowball the game, or if the game's even, then you can just. And if you have a safe jungle, like say Udyr, if you have flash on Udyr, then it's really safe to just. Uh, it just pauses stalemates because the enemy will stop being aggressive because they don't have wards. And so oh Night Jackie God. actually I just. I see what's gonna, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious how uh, he takes him down. <laughs> so we have just wow. the rocket spam taking him down that, really that, quickly. That was a waste of an ultimate. He should not have even used his ultimate. Now it's gonna be down for several minutes. And it was obviously wasn't gonna kill Kogma, so that's a mistake a lot of people make. They like flash or use an ultimate when it's not gonna matter. And then that means they're just not gonna have it up. And so we do have them taking this blue buff as well as this bottom turret, uh, you know, while they have this advantage, so it is pretty low. We have Graves coming down though, we have Nocturne as well, but I think they should expect Elements is here. Oh they don't God. see him. The Pulverize into the headbutt, and he actually flashes out of there. But Tristana picking up the kill will be able to jump out of there as well. TF coming in now, and will get the stun onto Alistar. But actually, Udyr oh. going to walk right into him. St. Vicious going to work now. Nijacky picking up one kill. St. Vicious actually getting it, and then backing out of there. We have the Shenton, so West Rice in here as well. Victor is the only one not in this, but there is the Pulverize once again. We have another death, and uh, they will be able to take down that tower. Yeah, Curse is just so tanky that they didn't. They pretend, pretend that the tower didn't even exist, but I think the tower did more damage than Calamity did that fight, so that probably says more about how far behind Calamity is. And yeah, I don't know why West Rice did that. That was a hero mode play I was talking about. That was, that was not a smart play in like any regard. Hey, he wanted the kill, you know. Come on, you, you have to, you have <laughs> no, to get the kill. Yeah, but then when it fails, it looks really bad. So, yeah, you have, you have to really watch out when you're in playing in competitive play not to do something like that or else it could make you get really far. Or it could put, like, the enemy to get back in the game. But, but if it works, okay. or if it works, if you it look works, like a badass. Yeah, but, like, in this case, like, the yeah. enemies were, like, maybe as much as a few minions right now. Um, I would not waste a flash and, right. like, risk my life to get it, but... Yeah, I guess you would look like a badass and your score would look slightly better, but yeah, I would personally r recommend against it. Yeah, and the big issue now is just how far ahead Curse is. There's like yeah. almost no way that Calamity can yeah, even win a fight. Like when you're eleven K go to head and it turns out you only the enemy only has eighteen K, that means they're really far behind because yeah, you're like seventy percent or so go to head, which is absurd. It shouldn't happen. I think, Actually, yeah, wow. Jackie just going to work, not, destroying yeah. Graves there. They are getting kind of low with this Baron, so we'll see if we have an engage. Actually, the slow uh, pushing them back, and so we'll see some damage. But actually, the taunt oh in Elements God. is up here as well. Nijackie just bombarding so them. And so Cop coming in, he has that red buff. TF going to get the stun. He needs to back out of there, Draw gets really the stun. He is going to go down, and actually Nocturne coming in, trying to pick up West Rice, but he's just a little bit too tanky. We oh. have Victor coming in as well. The hop over, the double kill for Cop. He's coming back onto Soraka with that jump, and so he should be able to pick up this kill and then jump onto Victor. So that's actually going to be a quadra kill, or we'll see, oh, double kill. No, actually, uh, Nijacky able to grab it, but um, they will be able to pick up this Baron, and then uh, with that regen, it's just going to be too much. Yeah, I think Calamity don't need to group up better. Like there, there was actually a chance to win that fight. That was probably the only possible way they could win that fight. But they were split in like Cedar, Cedar split in like several directions. So Curse just took advantage of that and cut them down as they split. Yeah, and so really easily they're able to pick up that fight. Um, I don't. They had a number of them low with the Baron. Yeah. If they had the vision, they maybe could have uh, held off a little bit longer. But uh, West Rice, you know, forcing that initiation because you know just recognizing. All right, we're getting low. We have to get out of there. Wow, actually, TF porting on top of the Baron. Um, didn't little, realize he yeah. was coming back that quickly. So uh, right before that happens, here we go. We're doing the Baron. They're all getting pretty low. TF doesn't really have enough damage though. So yeah. trying to steal it a little bit too late. Did he actually come in after? No, uh, yeah, he did. I think he figured that since he looked like West Rice is low, that he could get him. But the problem is, he doesn't realize that even if West Rice is that low, he can't even kill him because he's so far behind. Yeah, so unfortunately, he does go down. 
Um, Curse, you know, they will be able to uh, pick up that Baron. They have so much gold. We'll, you know, just see a number of items. Actually, Cog, he doesn't have uh, Rylize, so not going to be able to get that slow. But actually, St. Vicious, he's going in for it. He's going to be able to pick yeah, this up. We're going to have the follow-up with Nijacky. So with one more ultimate, there it goes. Actually, St. able to grab it. But uh, we'll have to see. And so coming into game number two, because, you know, uh, hey, yeah, this game's go over. either way. Who knows? Yeah. Of course, but uh, coming into game number two, like, what is, I don't know, what do you think Calamity's primary objectives are going to be in order to not allow the game to snowball quite so quickly? Uh, probably learn how to play safe, because <laughs> it's clearly, like, there was a lot of things they were doing poorly in the lane phase when they were behind. They, they just, they dug a hole so deep that they jumped in it and they couldn't get out. So, yeah, that level one was pretty... The like level one put them behind, but it was still recoverable. But when you start playing aggressive, when you you shouldn't be, you just start losing every single lane. So that's sort of what happened. And Nijacky, incredibly strong at this point, has the blue buff. They will be fine. Um, I know Cog can be kind of really annoying to go against, but you know, yeah. again, the issue wasn't really Cog. You have the late game. Actually, Elements coming in. He's going to maybe be able to get the kill. He does grab the TF. The quick kill onto Victor as well. And now they're going to grab Nocturne, jumping death. in on Trist. Um, so it's, it's kind of weird because, like, you know, Cog at this point is just absolutely unstoppable. Wow, actually, so there's another kill uh, very easily. But Cog at this point is, is just so strong. But the issue wasn't really Cog this game. Um, it was just the fact that they fell behind so quickly. So yeah. do you think maybe we ban out a champion like Alistar that can uh, get those early advantages or maybe Shen for that top lane? Uh, just, I'm not sure what they could really do. The problem was right. uh, Calamity did have a good like lane strategy. The problem is they lost before um, Nocturne or TF could get level 6. So their entire strategy went out the window because they lost at level 1 to 5. We actually uh, have the flash taunt from West Rice. Uh, There's the quick kill. And now Nocturne, unfortunately, making his way in there. We have the jump from Cop, but they're not going to be able to grab it. St. Vicious just destroying this TF. One more attack. He is able to get that. And Nijacky, in the meantime, just uh, eating man, them alive. Uh, There's Nocturne. You always have to get the fountain kills. So, so, yeah. I don't I don't know what they could really ban. That could help them yeah. at this rate. <laughs> they Do just you think... I mean, do you think maybe if you know that you're going to fall behind early and, you know, top lane, uh, St. Vicious in particular coming yeah. in and just destroying Victor, um, I don't know, would, would you tend to send your support top, get some early wards up there uh, uh, to protect your lane? You either your jungle or support. Top problem was every lane was losing, so you couldn't, like, spare anybody. Nocturne was behind. Soraka and uh, Graze were getting destroyed bottom, so... Problem was the fact that every single lane lost meant they couldn't spare any resources, and it just really snowballed from there. So I'm not really sure. Yeah, what they could have done much. The problem is Victor is not a good pick for top lane. Oh, TF trying to grab this Cog. He's hungry. We have Saint Vicious grabbing yeah, the Doctor. Got one. Cog does go down, and Saint Vicious now turning onto Soraka. How many kills can he get if he comes in TF? No. Does he get the stun? There's the stun. He can get some damage. Uh, he Staying wants to just five v one them. He will back off, though. Uh, you know, we'll see. Actually, oh, Victor. <laughs> oh, That's... useless Victor. <laughs> All right, he lives. Yeah, we'll see. We have, you know, Curse. They have the Nexus turrets. They should be able to come up here. Everyone, they just keep... Why do you keep on walking into them? But, uh, I don't know. They get, the game's over. Uh, they, they recognize it's over. So, just trying to, you know, have fun. get more kills from both sides. The Calamity looks like they're trying to get a kill. Curse is just trying to ace him over and over. That's that's what I always like seeing TSM do. Like even against the top team, they're, they they uh, they want to get those pentas in the uh, the fountain and whatnot. No, no West Rice. Why? Pro TF. TF so good. Well, we'll see. Saint Saint Vicious actually finally hitting this. There's actually the pulverize the headbutt back. So TF is going to drop pretty quickly, but actually St. Fish is very close to going down. Oh, he does go down. It's so good. We can account that to the skin. He can, he can put it on his fridge. He'll print it off, and uh, he'll show his mom, and she'll be like, you you got a kill on the St. Vicious, the St. Vicious. Yeah, he's probably going to get a trophy back home in his hometown, so he should be waiting for that. And so we will see. This game will be over any second now. Actually, 
Cop getting that kill. I was thinking it would be Cog. They're oh, trying to no. get it. Actually he diving for away. it. There's one more kill. He no. just got his team killed. Oh, wow. <laughs> but we do have the game is over. So game one going to curse. They do beat Calamity. Um, 38 to 12. So it was, you know, a back and okay. forth match the entire time. Really <laughs> just came down to the wire. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. So coming into game number two, we will have that up shortly, and it's actually going to be Chaos and uh, AJ yeah. hat person. Uh, they'll All be right. coming in here for game number two, so um, that'll definitely be fun. We'll be able to check that out, and it's I don't know, it's always interesting game number two of when you have like a pros versus yeah. Uh, usually like pros guy. would like play really hard the first game, right. and then like I know Dignitas would usually do that, and then like the second game they pull out some random picks and and then try to win with that. So we could see that. We don't know. Or it could be a 20-minute steamroll. We'll see. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see. Thank you. Uh, it was awesome. I have the invite going. So we are in the game. We'll be seeing that shortly. We are going to go to a commercial break, and then we'll be back shortly. Chaos and uh, AJ will be in here. So uh, stay tuned, guys. Thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. You. Anything you want to awesome. say to everyone? Uh, no, not really. It was, was a, it was a pleasure casting this game. So thanks for having me here. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll be back soon.